Eric Burgess here with Music Marketing TV, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at creating an entire beat with the only mixer effect being Blue Cat Audio Dynamics. Now you notice I said mixer effect there, it's because I still need to synthesize my sound, and to do that, I'm gonna be using effects and stuff in the synthesizer. So we're gonna be making a sound with a synthesizer, and then the panning, all the mixing basically is gonna go down inside of Blue Cat Audio. I'm not allowed to load any other plugins. So this is gonna be kind of interesting. I also kind of want to use it as a wave shaper, see what we can get out of this. So first, here's a preview of what we will be making. So this is the preview. We used Blue Cat Audio to do a bunch of really cool techniques, but first let me show you what we come up with in this video. This is what we got. So that is what we come up with. There are some things I'd like to probably expand if I were to spend even more time uh, just building out a track and getting some proper structure. But let me go ahead and show you a couple techniques real fast and then we'll get into the actual making and you'll see me come across the techniques or actually you to use them when I'm working. So the first one is at this bass sound, there's actually no distortion being used in the synthesis engine. It is all being done using a wave shaper via Blue Cat Audio Dynamics. And so if I come in here, we see we have two of them. One of them I label distortion. If I turn that off, that's my original sound. Here it is with it on. Now so these things are part of the synthesis engine. These are all part of, well, except for this one. Uh, these are part of the dynamics. So you see dynamics, dynamics, dynamics. So those are all dynamics processing. Um, with some cool things you can do, uh, this, is, this one is functioning as a wave shaper with the attack release. And then every now and then I bring the hold to mess with that to get some cool artifacts. And, as I, and it's a pluck sound. And as I bring the pluck away, make it more of a sustained sound, that's where we get this sort of middle ground stuff. And you can see here when the hold comes up, these things, we get these like kind of the sounds. Usually not desired, but I, I kind of like them. That. That's been done on purpose. And that bow, that really nice bow is part of the pluck sound finally coming up because it's been down the whole time. Uh, so that's going on there. And then we do a bunch of things as we go throughout. So that's the first, so that's the first, that's like the big one. So that's the distortion. I'm also using it for, uh, we're also just doing some general compression, bringing things up. So if I turn these both off, it's just really soft. And it also has a really hard time coming through when the drums and everything are going. And if we come over here too and the drums are open after the filter. So some pretty important processing there. Uh, the flute is also going through some stuff. These ones are being used to do some interesting moves with panning, where we process the left and right channels separately, we compress them separately, and then I'm automating the ratio to create a sense of panning. And because even, we can't even do panning. I want to do panning all fancy too, right? So uh, we could see that here with the, where are you? Uh, the flute up ratio. So this is the panning. And so as the ratio goes up, we get less of one channel because the compression is happening less. And thus we achieve panning. And in this case, depending on how we set it up, we can get some 
odd panning because it also comes with some dynamics processing that's different between the two channels. So if you listen, uh, you can actually hear this uh, sort of flute sound, which we do make. And so if we turn this on, you can hear it moving. So pretty handy thing right there. It really, it doesn't shine too much on its lonesome, but when you put it in a mix with everything, it helps it move it, move it out of the way of other things. So it's a lot more useful in a group as opposed to by itself. I mean, it's there, but it's just not as noticeable. So that's what we're doing with there. The drums, of course, have their own thing. Now the drums are a lot softer without the compression. I brought them up using the compression, but if I were to uh, turn the effects off, I'm splitting the drums into mid side and then each Blue Cat Audio Dynamics is processing them differently. So this is like the side channel. And then I brought them up to taste according to these faders right here. And then these go through another one because I didn't have a filter and all I'm using is Blue Cat Audio Dynamics. So in this one, we are using this for the pre-filter. That's how I get the filter at the beginning. Um, that's why the drums right here are also so soft is it's doing a, it's, I'm using the pre-filter as just a regular filter. So if I were to uh, come over here, and now I'll turn these back on. Also, one thing that was kind of like, whoa, for me at least on this particular mix was how easy it was to target the kick using this, because I did the side and the mid separate, and the kick on this particular loop just really popped out with just the mid channel. Um, yeah, so this is just a filter. I mean, right here, that just means that the, it won't start off filtered. Where if we turn this on, we get it. So it's not really, this particular thing isn't really that spectacular as far as a, like a technique or something. Just using it as a filter, you know? See, there's no drums now. You hear it in the background and then I also bring it up as sort of like to work them in there. So it fits in musically as well. So anyways, we're gonna be looking at those techniques. I also do most of my sound design with Harmer. And so you're gonna see the construction of this sound and also the bass sound. And I'm going to, in general, skip quite a bit of the melodic writing just because uh, it takes a while to do. So, and I wanna focus more on some of the other things. But anyways, that's that. So there's the preview. Let's go ahead and dive right into it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I wanna write out a groovy bass line. So let's go ahead and write out a groovy bass line. First, we need a bass sound. To do that, I'm gonna bring the pluck down. This is Harmer, by the way. I should probably introduce it. Here's, this is Harmer. And we got a pluck sound. I'm gonna bring a little bit of the high end off that. Just a smidge. And I'm going to bring a verb into it. I'm gonna set it to W, which is uh, warm. I like that particular sound. And I'm also going to bring, not the decay up, I'm going to bring the decay down a bit and the damping up. And the damping just makes it so that high frequencies and the reverb go away faster. We get a warmer sound, it'll, it'll be a bit nicer. Cool. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to add a unison. This basically uh, is like a chorus. It'll just give us a nice stereo image to work with. And we're gonna get some really interesting uh, bass sounds and I kind of want to run this through the wave shaper see what we get out of it But uh, to start off, let's write in a bass line. Okay, so here's the bass line. I came up with sounds as such And then this is a, a pretty musical line so it kind of needs to continue but we're gonna work with this right now as our skeleton Basically, I thought mostly in C minor for the most part. So let's go ahead and get rid of this for now. And let's toss on a Blue Cat Audio. Well, let's get straight to it, you know? So here, here's our sound. And I'm gonna bring the attack and the release all the way down. I'm gonna bring the threshold down. The threshold, I grab the ratio at the same time. And we'll bring it, the ratio up the other way. And let's get some distortion rolling. Okay, and I also wanna do a couple things. I'm gonna just repeat this for now, uh, likely to change. I'm going to, first I'm going to automate the phase of the unison. 
And a sound like this, the two waves, the two clones will greatly change each other. And that'll have a pretty drastic effect on the sound actually with a unison of this sort of a setup with this kind of a sound. So I'm just gonna move this up and down all around. Let's hear it. See, we get a way more variable and sort of expressive uh, atmosphere from this. The other thing I like to do is I really like to get in there, fine tune my frequency movements that could work really well. And I'm also going to bring up the resonance a touch so that when I move around the filter, we'll get a nice like wow, wow, wow kind of sound. And we'll see if I'm gonna dial that up or down after the fact, cause I kinda need to hear it. And there was also one other move. Oh yeah, vibrato. We're going to mess with this vibrato. I automated the depth. And let's go ahead and get right to it. So basically we have our frequency and our depth along with the unison phase. This could be somewhat random. Every now and then you'll want to dial it in to get a specific texture at a specific moment. Uh, so let's go ahead and just dial in this first little bit. Right here, I want to do a vibrato thing. So we'll bring that up and down. Let's see if that's enough. Ooh. Yeah, okay, and let's do one of these. How would that be? It's a pluck sound, and this, we're getting the distortion after the fact, so we might have to be a lot more aggressive uh, here and make a much smaller sort of dip. How's it sound without that? Oh yeah, I like that more with it. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, on these right here, I also want to add a little pitch bend thing. And so I'm going to make this unique so I don't change the other pattern. And I just want there to be a, 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 a run down. That'd be kind of nice. Yeah, <laughs> let's do it with uh, one other. Let's do it on the three. It's kind of, let's do one of those. We'll, we'll go up. See, my eyebrows are sort of linked to the pitch. Like, oh, like, I don't even know. Okay. Oh yeah, that's nice. Okay, 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 okay. So let's go ahead, bring this back. Uh, I like that, I like that. Let's keep these the same. We're gonna bring it in and then we'll reach some sort of a jam. So I guess this will be our intro. Uh, let's go ahead and also try one other thing with another blue cat this time. So this is our first one. Should probably name these, but I kind of want them to all say blue cat dynamics because it'll be obnoxious. Uh, so I'm gonna just put in, instead of stereo, I'm gonna put distortion that's our distortion unit right and actually let's see about uh automating this threshold right that sounds like kind of a cool thing to do uh so let's go ahead go to browse parameters not browse presets browse parameters okay up threshold we're going to grab this and let's move this up and down let's, let's hear what that sounds like goodness not we don't want that let's bring the hold up the touch that's amazing we got to take advantage of that okay so uh do, 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 do. browse parameters hold you could spend so long on just one sound in one part i swear there's a billion things we could do to make it cool so we got to make this come in when we really want it though i kind of want to do like a texture change right there just because Right at the beginning, though, it'll be kind of a sudden musical decision. Wow, that's really interesting. Maybe not that much. Maybe you don't need that much. I like this. It's like the artifacts, kind of cool. Um, because we have such an, a fast attack and release. That's why we're getting these things. That's, that's really cool right there. Let's bring this up. See what that is. Oh, you know what, right here? And we'll bring this up. Okay, so I found that if you bring this down right here, you this this is like down is more distortion, ups less distortion, because it's a threshold. So this is quite an interesting effect. It's 
Uh, we're bringing down, so the hold's coming down right here, so it's not really doing anything right there, or it, it's doing things, but not as much. But uh, yeah, you get that nice texture. If we were to bring it back up, you get like a fast, a fast, boom. But I kind of like the drawn out. But we should probably come back up after that. Okay, cool. So I'm going to squeeze these things back together a little bit. And now we have, lo and behold, we have our bass sound. It's a little bit crazy right now. I was gonna throw another Blue Cat Dynamics on it. In fact, let's do it before we do anything else. Here's another BC Dynamics. And we are going on this one to do just the mid. So I'm gonna go in mid side, turn off the side. Actually, let's do just the side. Okay, so after some messing around, I am not all that stoked about the side, so let's try the mid. We get a nice sort of forward backwards with the verb on this configuration. Uh, so I'm gonna run with this one, and I just fiddled with some settings for a while until I got something I liked. And I'm gonna bring actually the attack up just a smidge now looking at this yeah and i'm gonna go to browse parameters i'm going to move the ratio of the up band again and this one i already have so much automation this is insane this one is going to start at 50 pretty close and then it's going to open up over time it's going to make it sound a little more spacious See, because right now it's pretty close to where it was before and that result is going to sound I close because and then as I move it, it will bring up the verb with it and will sound a little more spacious. Uh, also, this is getting a bit loud, but luckily we have a fader. Okay, so here I'm going to do a couple of things, write out a slightly different end phrase, and then we're going to reach. I'm also going to write in a little uh, bass re repetitious line that I can toss some drums over and let's get that running. So let's see. So for the end section, I just changed it to do this. We'll see if that sticks or not, but let's go ahead. Let's write out this part. Yes. Okay. So that's going to be our jam. Uh, this is what we came up with or I came up with whatever we came up with this. And of course, look at all this stuff we already did. So we can't just not use this. I haven't thought about form here at all yet. Um, so I'm thinking actually this might go here, but I'm gonna deal with this. This will just make it so that these, these things aren't messed with. And if I wanna keep this, I can and mess with it later. So let's go ahead and grab some values. Oh, we have a pop right there. That's a phase thing. Man, that's cool. Okay, so let's go ahead. Where's my filter? It's sitting pretty open. The pops change nature right there too. So that's kind of handy. If you hear some pops, maybe we could dampen them and bring them up. Right there. Whew, tried to get me. Your pop sound won't work. That's nice. So, okay. Uh, mm, do we want to do vibrato? No, we're not going to touch the vibrato for this. Uh, the dynamics could certainly be interesting. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, hold again, another interesting one. Probably only bring it up on the doom, 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 doom. I think that'd be kind of a cool effect to have occur periodically, which always happens on the third beat. This one will be longer. Why not? Why keep it the same every time? Don't, don't do that. Man, 
I'm thinking about trying to manipulate the phase for this because we get that pop. Right there, there's some sort of a pop thing that happens. Let's see if we can get a pop on this one. Oh, we got one. See, phase is a touchy setting. You gotta get it just right. Yeah, let's, let's stick with that. Okay, so, oh yeah, and then to get the cool, dense effect. Yeah, 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 you gotta peel off some of that high stuff to get the nice, or whatever that is. So, okay, cool. We have this, <laughs> drums. Let's get some drums going here. Um, I'm gonna go with just some loops for now. I feel like I could get quite a ways with just loops, so let's do that. So for the loops, uh, there's one called Dusty Trip Hop by Black Octopus that I have been enjoying a lot. So let's do those. And let's just find a good one. I'm at 110. Okay, so this, I like this one. What I'm gonna do though is it's at 80 and I wanna sync it. So there's an easy way to sync it if you have Regroover. If you don't, there's other ways, but I like using Regroover for this. It's the most straightforward. Okay, all you gotta do is you grab your drum loop. You toss it in. It actually does a bunch of other really cool stuff. But what we're gonna do is we're just going to, now, if I play it, it synced it. But if I play it, it's at like half speed. So I wanted to go twice as fast, which takes half the time. So you click divide by two. I, I know it's kind of confusing, but that's how it works. Now if we play it. So we're gonna be running with this. Actually, we could pull out different layers. Uh, ooh, I'm really tempted to, if we like play. But I'm going to just peel it all out as the regrooved loop. Uh, we'll do that other more creative stuff. Uh, a slightly different time. So let's play it. Oh, this is gonna jam. Okay, uh, we definitely need to do some mixing. Oh, this is gonna be tough without EQ. I was wondering why it wasn't coming up or down, and it just occurred to me. If you're a regroover user, you know the pain. Um, see, host. Host is on. I wanted to say sync, because I saw sync. Host is on. Now let's balance it. Man, that's already so there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do some parallel processing with this fella and get some cool things out of this because you've seen, you've now sort of seen how I think. Get a lot of mileage out of one sound instead of adding a million sounds. Although that can also be really fun. So I'm going to send this to a track. Uh, mm, yeah, what the heck, we'll stick with five. So it's on five. I'm going to route it to the next two tracks and take this one. And so it routes to these and these go to the, the bus and the bus goes to the master. So I'm gonna name this um, part one and this other one part two. I don't know, I could probably come up with better names, but whatever. And you know the effect, because we're only picking one effect, we're picking this. So this one's gonna be a mid side and we're gonna go for the side and let's just hear it. And actually both I believe come through. Um, oh yeah, we have to unmute that. So this would be like how loud we want our side information because I'm just gonna do some crazy stuff to the side and some crazy stuff to the mid. And then I actually, I, maybe I will let this one out or no, I should bust it out as a separate two. And I'll bring them all in and mix them in at different moments to create a cool effect. Now, immediately, if you're if we mute this, check it out. Also, be aware that there's gain compensation on all of this. So that's why the curve sort of behaves the way it does. But if we bypass this, I've forgotten where the bypass button is, but there's one right here. So we'll just click that and listen to this. Now listen to the verb in the back, the space. That's nice. So we're gonna be running with that and we'll be dialing that in. I really dig what this is doing. Also, we have the options for peak and RMS. I'm gonna set this to RMS and set the time for the RMS down to like 205 through that. 
see you get a much crisper like you you grab those things a lot more aggressively and they're sort of gated a bit more i kind of i don't want it like that sharp though but if we bring it really short you'll really hear it I'm also gonna go for opto on this one. It tends to sound a little more what I call mellow. Not as much high, not as aggressive. I tend, I like that. Okay, so we're gonna dial in that. That should come down, right? And we'll bring in this one. This one is of course going to be the one that carries the mids. So here we have it. And we could do an interesting left-right thing here as well, but I'm going to leave that for perhaps another channel. And we bring that down, bring the attack up, spare our kick and snare and whatnot. Uh, I'm going to go for the middle down the path. Why not? Leave it on peak. Bring down the ratio. Holy snappers should have been ready for that. That is loud because most of our information is living through this one. Let's bring that down for now. Wow, we can really grab the kick through this. Holy smokes. Uh, do I wanna mess with the down envelope? What the heck, we'll mess with the down envelope. We'll put a small gate on it. Why not? It'll be crispy. Let's mix them in with our, with our fancy gate right here and see what we can accomplish. Now I notice we're getting a choppy kick. Perhaps bring this down. That, the kick is so beefy, holy crap. Okay, let's dial it in though, it's a bit loud. It's not even that loud. Oh, I'm looking at this channel, that's what it is. I need to be looking at a master, I need a master fader. Uh, I know I said I'd only load one, but I'd like to also load a wave candy and I have a preset uh, for my master peak meter, just so I can see where my peaks are lying. So, yeah, that's pretty loud. Okay, so let's dial that back. I'm not gonna worry too much about keeping it away from zero. I like so some clipping while you're being creative can be fine because at the usually I'll bring down all the faders and mixing in one at a time, one at a time thinking as a mixing engineer, not as a being creative. This is a pretty interesting thing we got going here. I like the space we have. Let's go ahead and um, hear everything together. So much low end stuff. Any high stuff we add is gonna come through so clear. It would be freaking amazing. Now we do have the ability to filter these drums. It exists in the form of the pre-filter ability given to us. So on the bus, now I'm gonna run these, try to run these through a second bus. Yeah, we're gonna run these through a second bus. Um, whoops, I routed, I lost my routing there. So um, take that, turn that one off. And now these two go to this one. We'll call this one our bus of a bus. We're getting crazy now. And I'm going to filter off some of the high end using the pre-filtering options available. So uh, they're right here. And of course, we're gonna have to automate these. We can't have these be sitting still. So honestly, I think when mixing happens, projects start to look way crazier because there's typically a lot of automation. Man, it should be interesting if we do like it. Oh man, we could bring this in slowly and be so musical. Heck yeah, man. So let's grab this. 
pull it over, grab this, and we'll let it open up right here, you know? That way, what this will do is it will allow the listener to sort of acclimate to the this bass and this bass, since we're not going to be relying on EQ techniques to really separate them. Uh, let's save this too. I'm going to call it Music Marketing Blue Cat Dynamic. I already have one called Blue Beat. Well, Beat Beat. This is the Beat Beat Beat. So let's hear this. So here's what we have thus far with our now mixed in drums so far. So, okay, I like this. One thing, the bass sound sounds like it should open up filter wise. And to me, that's like more harmonics. So I'm thinking we could bring the pluck knob off at this particular moment. I'm gonna make a massive pluck automation just because I don't want these values to change. And this is one of the easier ways to do that. There's another way to do it, but I'm not gonna deal with it right now. And so I'm gonna open this up and sort of close it back down. That's <laughs> so freaking cool. Okay, wait, let's go over here and uh, change this around too. I can't leave it still anymore. I have to I have to see what it was gonna be like. Oh, it's gotta open up more. Oh my gosh. I wanna grab this short note and bring it out. Like, look, it's begging. It's, it's saying, Eric, Eric, you forgot about me. Don't forget about me, Eric. And I'm going okay. Oh, maybe. Maybe not. Maybe this is, I'm getting different vibes about this now. Yeah, right around there. And this, ooh, I wonder, since the Nate's being sustained out, I believe it will open and close like a filter would anyways. I feel like I'm sort of cheating because this is not a Blue Cat audio, but I'm doing all this other stuff, so. No, it's gotta be right, it's gotta grab the note at the beginning. Okay, so I'm not sure how much I'm gonna add of this in editing. So here is a little preview uh, with our now added pluck automation, opening the sound up a bit. Okay, that's pretty cool. Now I wanna add in like a, a repeating sort of square wave kind of thing that's getting filtered and is a little twangy, like un unsure pitch wise, chorusy that like comes in and out like something like that. You know, a little, a little nice, a little nice, whatever that means. Gonna bring, so I'm moving kind of quick. Square wave, bringing the filter down. Uh, we're going to bring the volume envelope. It's going to be important in this kind of a sound. It's going to come down and swing down pretty quick. Uh, I don't want the to be that long. Also, we're playing way too low. That kind of a sound. See, it's kind of like nasally because of that filter. Well, not nasally, nasally, but it's nasally. Some verb on it, some, uh, some chorus with a high depth and a lower speed. Maybe a higher speed. Yeah, I'm vibing a higher speed. Um, so a higher order. I'm gonna bring down the filter a bit. Something like that. And uh, might mess with the envelope a bit. Oh man, I really like the swip up though. That's a, that's a word, swip, why not? I feel like, let's do this tempo synced. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, let's roll with this. Kind of have to be a softer sound. I'll turn the volume down here. Sure, 
why not? I really like that detune stuff we got going on here. This might be, I think I'm gonna wind up doing this, so I'm gonna just do it now. Uh, the swip is cool, but I can't, I can't do that quite yet. And that would be like a, a moment thing. I'm not sure I'd, I'd write out a line that does it. I don't know. It varies. So let's write these in. Triplets. And I like my tight grabs, you know, where they just, they just stop. So I'm going to, as far as release goes, it's gonna stop when I let go of the note. I like that. Something like that, you know, one of those do 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 ba ba do 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 do. Na 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 na. I copied this one to the wrong pitch, but it was kind of cool. Might keep that. Um, bring this to a C though. That'll be interesting. I'm gonna to toss it here at the beginning where the drums are kind of low, just to get a feel for how it'll sort of sit. And I'm thinking about just bringing the volume up and down on it. Oh, that's gonna fit nice. Uh, I definitely think the attack needs to be a little more. Uh, let's try um, doing this with a envelope. So you right click, Harmer actually has several envelopes. So I'm gonna, are, are, they call them articulators because you can have them be like a bunch of things. So I'm going to, makes sense for articulating. Notice that this sound uh, has is much less affected by the phase. Just wanted to point that out. Uh, it's because of all the additional harmonics and how high everything is. Just a lot less affected with the type of processing. Bass sounds would be a lot more affected by stuff like this. So anyways, interesting side note. That is cool. So let's bring that in. Um, now, of course, we can't let it just be that. We gotta do more to it. It sounds kind of like a flute, so I'm gonna call it a flute. And let's add a dynamics to it. You thought I was gonna grab some other effect, didn't you? So I'm gonna go ahead and do a left-right thing on this one. So I'm gonna go left, and then I'm going to also do another dynamics follow through in series that'll control the right. And on this one, I'm gonna just do different things. So I'm gonna bring this one up like randomly and keep it all on peak with a, what the heck, 15 millisecond attack. And I'm also going to basically just hard limit it. They have a hard limiter here, I could use that. Well, I'm not gonna be reaching the peaks. Maybe I'll do some uh, sort of a compression thing instead. Or expansion. I need to see the envelope behaving a little bit. Okay, that's kind of what I want. And now the other channel has been neglected, so we got to do some stuff with that. So let's do some stuff with that one. We'll do it the other. Well, that's an expander. We don't want an expander. We want a compressor here. Threshold, ratio. We'll mess with the knees independently on this one. So 
So now we can kind of pan using the ratio, which is a technique I discovered in a previous attempt at doing this sort of a thing uh, with, with actually with this plugin. So it's kind of interesting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to automate the ratio on one of these, but I'm also going to have to dial it back a touch, but that's no big deal. So I'm gonna go to browse parameters, looking for the ratio. Again, this up ratio is just a handy setting to have lying around. Let's also dial in volume wise. This will just give us some nice abilities. <laughs> I forgot this is ratio and not panning, so I gotta be careful about how big I go here. But this will just uh, give us nice spatial movement. I think up is more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's all about up since this is a threshold. So this is basically gonna be like regular. And then as we bring the threshold up, we'll pan more this way. Okay, so I'm gonna move this around a bit and play with it just a touch. Um, just try and make a moments a little more special. All right, so I went through, added some stuff. Uh, the big time jump is because I went and did some stuff. So if you're wondering what the heck, so yeah, there is sort of a time jump, but I went through, added a couple of elements to make things merge a little bit better, did a little bit of mixing, didn't mix to a proper level, it just mixed to full scale. I'm not, I do it a whole separate mixing stage for this. Get the track down first, you know? Um, but let's go ahead and I'm going to do the preview right now. So this is the preview. We used Blue Cat Audio to do a bunch of really cool techniques, but first let me show you what we come up with in this video. This is what we got. So that is what we come up with. There are some things I'd like to probably expand if I were to spend even more time uh, just building out a track and getting some proper structure. But let me go ahead and show you a couple techniques real fast and then we'll get into the actual making and you'll see me come across the techniques or actually you to use them when I'm working. So the first one is at this bass sound, there's actually no distortion being used in the synthesis engine. It is all being done using a wave shaper via Blue Cat Audio Dynamics. And so if I come in here, we see we have two of them. One of them I label distortion. If I turn that off, that's my original sound. Here it is with it on. Now so these things are part of the synthesis engine. These are all part of, well, except for this one. Uh, these are part of the dynamics. So you see dynamics, dynamics, dynamics. So those are all dynamics processing. Um, with some cool things you can do. Uh, this is this one is functioning as a wave shaper with the attack release. And then every now and then I bring the hold and mess with that to get some cool artifacts. And as I and it's a pluck sound. And as I bring the pluck away, make it more of a sustained sound, that's where we get this sort of middle ground stuff. And you can see here when the hold comes up, these things, we get these like kind of the sounds usually not desired but i i kind of like them. that that's been done on purpose and that bow that really nice bow is part of the pluck sound finally coming up because it's been down the whole time uh so that's going on there and then we do a bunch of things as we go throughout 
So that's the first, so that's the first, that's like the big one. So that's the distortion. I'm also using it for, uh, we're also just doing some general compression, bringing things up. So if I turn these both off, it's just really soft. And it also has a really hard time coming through when the drums and everything are going. And if we come over here too and the drums are open after the filter. Okay. So it's a pretty important processing there. Uh, the flute is also going through some stuff. These ones are being used to do some interesting moves with panning, where we process the left and right channels separately. We compress them separately, and then I'm automating the ratio to create a sense of panning. And because even can't even do panning. I want to do panning all fancy too, right? So uh, we could see that here with the where are you? Uh, the flute up ratio. So this is the panning. And so as the ratio goes up, we get less of one channel because the compression is happening less. And thus we achieve panning. And in this case, depending on how we set it up, we can get some odd panning because it also comes with some dynamics processing that's different between the two channels. So if you listen, uh, you can actually hear this uh, sort of flute sound, which we do make. And so if we turn this on, you can hear it moving. So pretty handy thing right there. It really, it doesn't shine too much on its lonesome, but when you put it in a mix with everything, it helps it move it, move it out of the way of other things. So it's a lot more useful in a group as opposed to by itself. I mean, it's there, but it's just not as noticeable. So that's what we're doing with there. The drums, of course, have their own thing. Now the drums are a lot softer without the compression. I brought them up using the compression, but if I were to uh, turn the effects off, I'm splitting the drums into mid side and then each Blue Cat Audio Dynamics is processing them differently. So this is like the side channel. And then I brought them up to taste according to these faders right here. And then these go through another one because I didn't have a filter and all I'm using is Blue Cat Audio Dynamics. So in this one, we are using this for the pre-filter. That's how I get the filter at the beginning. Um, that's why the drums right here are also so soft is it's doing a, it's, I'm using the pre-filter as just a regular filter. So if I were to uh, come over here, and now I'll turn these back on. Also, one thing that was kind of like, whoa, for me at least on this particular mix was how easy it was to target the kick using this because I did the side and the mid separate and the kick on this particular loop just really popped out with just the mid channel. Um, yeah, so this is just a filter. I mean, right here, that just means that the it won't start off filtered. Where if we turn this on, we get it. So it's not really, this particular thing isn't really that spectacular as far as a, like a technique or something. Just using it as a filter, you know? See, there's no drums now. You hear it in the background and then I also bring it up as sort of like to work them in there. See, so it fits in musically as well. So anyways, we're gonna be looking at those techniques. I also do most of my sound design with Harmer. And so you're gonna see the construction of this sound and also the bass sound. And I'm going to, in general, skip quite a bit of the melodic writing just because uh, it takes a while to do. So, and I wanna focus more on some of the other things, but anyways, that's that. If you enjoyed this video, let me know. Subscribe and hit the bell icon and have a blessed day.